You are being taken advantage of. You are being used, exploited, overworked and underpaid by your boss, by your company. In today's economy, you are suffering. I love my job. You hate your job. I love my job. And you, you are partly to blame. Let me put it to you simply. Are you going to look for a new job this year? Yeah, in the midst of a recession and inflation and all the problems in the economy, with all the uncertainty, with all the tech layoffs, hundreds of thousands of people being laid off, are you gonna look for a new job this year? If you are overworked and underpaid and all you get for doing more at your job is more work on top of that to do, it's like winning a pie eating contest and the prize is a pie. And yes, it's tough out there. Yes, we tell ourselves it's a tough economy, that the labor market's uncertain. Employers are looking for experience, 10 years of experience, but they want it as a starting job. Yes, there's confusion and uncertainty. And it's work to find a better job for better pay. And now in the midst of a recession with inflation at eight or 9%, and you, you did all that extra work last year trying to save your job, keep your job, and yet you only received a 2% increase and you were told to be happy about that. And for many of us, in this uncertainty, job security means more than getting more money or getting more recognition or affirmation. Yeah, what are you going to do with the 2,080 hours that you spend, that's the average in a work week, a work year, what are you going to do with your 2,080 hours? And what does it mean in your life? And then, oh, then there's inflation. Inflation, where things cost obscenely more than they did last year or the year before. The cost of electricity is up 14%. Butter's almost up 25%, air travel is 43%, and eggs, eggs are up more than 60%. So most of us, most of us are just gonna keep our head down. We're just gonna keep accepting more work. We're gonna be happy that we keep our job and we're gonna hopefully ride this out. And if we do, if you do, you're missing out. You're undervaluing yourself. You're missing the one opportunity, probably the first time in your life when you actually have leverage within the workplace. And what's this whole phenomena called today? It's called quiet hiring or quiet promotions. It's when you're given more work to do, but not more pay or a better title or better conditions. Yep, quiet promotions, and you are suffering from it. Hi, I'm James Callahan, and this is The Do-Over Show. And in my life, in my career, I've had more than 20 different jobs. I sat down and counted them the other day. Everything from starting as a busboy at a local steakhouse to the career that I have now, where I do six or seven different things. Some of them actually pay, many of them don't. But in that time, I've also had different career paths, where I've started in one area, worked for a while, developed a skill set, and then said, nope, or it just went away. For example, I used to teach and play tennis professionally. Yes, I did. That's how I put myself through grad school. But after that, there was no life and there's no future in that life unless you want varicose veins and to be underpaid and wear short pants 12 months a year. No. So I've had my share of do-overs, four or five genuine do-overs. It seemed like they were from scratch, but they really weren't. They were leveraging career skills and the knowledge that I had. And in navigating those career shifts, I've learned something about what it's like to be quietly promoted and to learn how to deal with job markets that evaporate, or job markets that are finally on our side. So why do you wanna look for a new job in such difficult times? Well, the number one reason is money. More of it or money that reflects the actual work that you are doing. That is money to match the quiet promotion that you have received. It better reflects your work and your skills and takes into account inflation pressures and the cost of living going up 10 and 20% in most areas while you were happy with that 2% raise or at least told to be happy. That's the number one reason people are willing to look for another job. Not just more money because they're greedy, not because they're unrealistic, but money that actually reflects the work and the value they are in the workplace. The next reason people give for wanting to look for a new job are better working conditions. Now that might mean remote work or hybrid work, but most of the time it means a better boss or better recognition or more validation or more purpose in their work where they're actually given recognition. A lot of us derive satisfaction from the work we do. I know, strange, right? And when it's not valued or it's undervalued or we are not appreciated or we don't get the validation that we need, and this is a very personal thing. I feel it, I've been there, you probably have too. When we don't get it, we're like, mm, I just wanna be appreciated. I just wanna be seen, I wanna be heard. I wanna have some influence. And when we don't have that in the workplace, many of us are willing to look for another job. 
The third reason people give are training and advancement opportunities. That is, they actually feel that they're giving an opportunity to be invested in. The company's investing in them, giving them skill sets, some of which are transferable to other jobs. But the company knows that valuing people by increasing their capacity and giving them increased skill sets benefits the company. And even if they leave, it benefits the quality of work that's done or the opportunity for advancement. Do you know that a lot of people leave their job just because they can't see a way from their current job to a promotion or advancement or that recognition thing, even just a title. And yeah, there are ways that bosses reward people to give them a title, maybe a little bit more work and a little bit more money. And it's just sort of to keep them around or to keep them happy. You know, real advancement is what people are after. That is that they can see a career path. That's why in this power dynamic, that's why the rhetoric is heated up and we've gone through all the different titles to the different experiences that we've had through this. From the great resignation, to quiet quitting, to acting your wage, to learning career cushioning, to make ourselves more valuable to employees so they didn't fire us. So here's what this quiet hiring or quiet promoting looks like today. According to a recent survey from JobSage reports that 78% of workers report an increased workload without increased compensation. When someone quits or is fired, 67% in this survey said that the company asked them to absorb the workload, again, without an adjustment in pay or compensation or titles. 73% were asked by managers to take on additional work to, quote, help the company and be a team player. And of course, 57% who experienced this said they felt exploited, taken advantage of, to end a sentence with a preposition. Yeah, Sister Marie, my grammar teacher in grade school, wouldn't like that. She's the one who, when I asked her, can I go to the bathroom, said, I don't know, Mr. Callahan, can you? Yeah, Sister Marie scarred me for life, but I still ended the sentence with a preposition. The survey said that 63% want a real promotion in title and compensation to match what's actually happening. And one in three of them, they're the people that say, I'm gonna look for a new job if I can't get it at my current job. So if you've been given extra work but haven't received a title or a pay increase or both, then you have been quietly promoted. Okay, what are you gonna do about it? Now, the easy answer is that you're just gonna go and get a different job, but that doesn't solve the problem because compensation and recognition and workload are industry specific and they tend to follow the same course so that just getting another job doing the same thing at another company really won't change your circumstance. You'll just be doing it for somebody else. The solution for you is to actually go for a different career path, to leverage your skill set and your experience in a different career path, one that is less subject to exploitation, one that's in higher demand where compensation and recognition go along with it. So that means moving from a field in which you are underappreciated and given more work without compensation to a field that is in higher demand. And that means learning what industries are out there and what your skill set and what your experience can add, the value add you bring when you make that career path change. For some, this will mean finding work that you're able to do that has meaning or purpose that's important to you, that motivates you, that you have an interest in. Yeah, that you would actually choose a career not just because of compensation levels, but because of your personal satisfaction levels. And what the most important thing is in making a career change is, is learning your value add. What the things that you have that are valuable in today's job market and how they can be leveraged in a different career. So that means leveraging your experience. You can become the shortcut for somebody who wants to disrupt a stagnant culture to not just upset, but to add something that is different. And adding something that's different is the easiest shortcut for somebody, a manager in particular, a company that's struggling with a stagnant culture. And culture change or culture renovation, huge topic today. People want to design their culture. They want to build their culture. They want to create a culture and they want buy-in from everybody so that they can be more mission-driven, so that they can actually have purpose in doing the tasks that are required in the job. And finding it is invaluable. How do they do it? They hire someone like you. And finally, if you've been quietly promoted, if you have received more responsibility, more work, but not more compensation, no change in job title, if you see other people in other industries doing what you do, but they're paid more and they make more, it's time to have the talk. The talk with the person that you directly report to. Hey. 
This idea of learning to do a stay interview rather than just an exit interview when it's too late is catching on within the workplace and you can learn to take advantage of it for your advantage. I've done a video on it and how you can ask that difficult question of your boss, have the talk with them. You can check out that video here. So what are you going to do? Are you going to look for a new job, something that actually gives you the compensation and the recognition, maybe the title that you know you deserve that others are getting but you're not in today's difficult, hard to manage job market? Or are you going to just keep your head down and quietly quit? Are you going to try to just make yourself more valuable and take on two or three people's jobs and learn to suffer as a good team player? How are you going to react in today's job market? Are you going to take advantage of things that are finally in your favor? Even in a tough economy, you still have the power. What are you going to do? Let us know in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. Hey, and thanks for being part of the Do Over Show. I'm really glad you're here. Could you please tap the like button because it helps. And while you're down there, how about you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. I'm so glad you found me and I found you. Thanks.